Good morning, everyone. I'm Marty Cavaluzzi. I'm the president here at Pierce College Puyallup. And I just want to thank all of you for coming. I also want you to know there's a bus coming from Fort Stillicum that has at least 70 people. And so at some point, you'll see a whole bunch of people come in here. Don't freak out or anything. They're just here for the event. And you'll be a little late. So just thank you so much for coming. Um, I woke up and I thought, wow, what a day. I just, I'm just so amazed. I never, actually, I never thought I'd have the opportunity to meet an astronaut, let alone introduced one. So this is a good day for me. I'm just glad I get to do it. It's a great honor and privilege to introduce today's speaker, Dr. So Yun E. Dr. E has the distinction of being South Korea's first and only astronaut, a position she earned after a highly competitive and high profile selection process in which she competed against 36,000 other applicants for that position. So think about that when you're all applying for universities or jobs or anything. 36,000 people she competed against. If you read Dr. E's biography, you quickly learn that she's a person with a lot of drive, determination, and an interest in excelling. For example, Dr. E began her professional career as an intern at the Korea Institute of Machinery and and materials in 2000. In 2001, she earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering from the Korean Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. That same year, she began working at the Digital Nano Locomotion Center, which she continued to do for several years. At the Digital Nano Locomotion Center, she began a career of designing, fabricating, and testing BioMEMS devices. Anyone, BioMEMS? All right. For those of you who do not know what MEMS are, MEMS, M-E-M-S, is the acronym for Microelectromechanical Systems. So Microelectromechanical Systems are essentially miniaturized mechanical and electromechanical devices and structures that are, used, that are made using the techniques of microfabrication. So if you take MEMS and then you add a biological component to that, you get BioMEMS, which are microelectromechanical systems for applications in biomedical research and medical micro devices. So that is incredibly small biomedical devices in a submicron and micron range in one dimension, picture that, and just up to several millimeters in another dimension. So these are incredibly small things. In 2002, Dr. E earned a Master of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering from the Korean Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. In 2006, Dr. E had the idea to apply to be an astronaut as part of South Korea's newly formed space program. She was one of 36,000 applicants. In December of 2006, after a 10-month intensive mental and physical application process, Dr. E was selected as one of two finalists. At that time, she began working as a researcher at the Korean Astronaut Project Division at the Korea Aerospace Research Institute. For 13 months, from March 2007 through April 2008, she participated in extensive training to be an astronaut at the Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Russia. On April 8, 2008, she was launched into space with two Russian cosmonauts, 11 days later, she returned to Earth along with two crew members from the International Space Station. After returning to Earth, she worked as a senior researcher at the Korean Astronaut Project Division at the Korea Aerospace Research Institute, as well as acted as Korea's space ambassador. As if that is not enough, now think about this, in 2008, the same year that Dr. E both trained to be an astronaut and went to the International Space Station, she completed and earned her PhD in biology and brain engineering from the Korean Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. The title of her PhD is DNA Separation Chips Using Temporally Asymmetric Ratchet Effect in Non-Uniform Electric Fields. Try doing that when you're training to be an astronaut at the same time. With an interest in looking forward toward the future, Dr. E went back to college. She attended the Haas Business School at the University of California, Berkeley, and in 2014 earned a Master of Business Administration with an emphasis on technology and global leadership. I also found out that she's taken classes here at this college. She's one of our students. So with that little bit of background into someone who's already lived a very exciting life, 
Could you all please join me in giving Dr. So Young E a warm and enthusiastic Pierce College welcome. Thank you, thank you. Wow. Good morning, everyone, and so nice to meet you, and I'm so honored to be here as a presenter in Pierce College because a year ago, a year and a half ago, I was a student here in second floor of these buildings. I took English 101 here. Mm. <laughs> yeah, right, I know, and you feel a little strange with English 101, and then, yeah, unfortunately, I've never learned English in U.S. before. And then until I studied in MBA class in UC Berkeley, and then I always studied English in Korea, and then my middle school, my primary school, and KAIST, and other class. And I worked with a lot of foreigners and Europeans, American students, and researcher, and then scientist. And then I wonder, and then what's my weakest part of my English? Because sometimes I feel a little uncomfortable with the communicating with my friends, even if we're talking very well and a lot, and I feel comfortable, but at some point, there's something I missed. And I talked with my husband, and he was living in Puyallup. That's because I come up to Puyallup all the way from California. And then he recommended me, how about to take English 101? Because every single college graduate and every single researcher and scientist, they should take English 101. And so that is the real basic, but you've never took. And then I told, no, I've never took English 101 in US. Of course, English 101 in Korea I took, but different textbook and different contents and different everything. And then I hesitated, where should I go? And then he told me, in 10 minutes, there's a college. <laughs> so really? <laughs> I came here, and then at first, I don't know how to take class here, even if I'm not a student of this college. And then I, at that time, in the same time, I was studying in UC Berkeley. And I was a student of a graduate course. And then yeah, one ad administration, people ask me, why you want to take English 101 here, even if you are studying in UC Berkeley? And then, yeah, because it's my summer vacation, I want to make my vacation more productive. <laughs> and, and then I should stay in Puyallup because my husband is living in Puyallup. And, so I really want to take English 101. And they said, yeah, if you want, you can take it. But I don't know our credit can work in a UC Berkeley or not because we don't have any partnership or anything at all. And I don't care, yeah. I sure already have a lot of GPA you should make in UC Berkeley. And English 101 is not part of that. English 101 is part of my life to make my English better, not part of MBA course. And they keep look me strangely and uh, kind of things. And they told me then, yeah, just in case, ask your director in California and then uh, ask them to allow you to take a class here. And then finally we can find some way. And then, yeah, it goes very well. And then my director in California also asked me, why do you want to take English 101? And then I've never took English 101 in US. And then same thing. And he, she said, oh yeah, interesting. And if you really want to study English more, and then take it. And then I took, and then as I remember, my professor name is Beth. And then I interviewed several students who are sitting in the chair in the student center, and then they recommend her, and then she's an incredible teacher. And then, okay, I trust you guys. <laughs> and then took her class, and it has an incredible time and a great time to learn English. And then I've never learned about some part of English and literature and then critical thinking even if I took more than 100 English class in Korea. So that was quite fun, and then hopefully I can have more basic about English in US. <laughs> so I feel very kind of familiar and then closer with you guys, because at some point I was your classmate. And maybe some of them 
were in my class with me. And then maybe at the time, they've never imagined that I'm an astronaut. <laughs> and then some students asked me and then what I'm doing. And then some student told me I'm working in a Walmart and then I'm working in a, some construction site. And then how about you? And then I told, uh -uh, I'm students in California, but I have a vacation here. But I couldn't tell them I'm graduate students because they believe I'm same college year students, oh, thank God, yeah. <laughs> Even if I'm more than 15 years older than them, but they believe I'm same age, or, that's good, why not? <laughs> yeah. well, why should I tell them I'm older than them, and then I just want to be one of the students, and then I told my husband proudly, they think me, I'm a college student. <laughs> so her husband told me, oh, good for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm almost 40, but they believe I'm around 20, so that make me my day. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> so, oh, thank God, you know, good to be an Asian. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, one of the biggest time of my life, and then I told my mom, 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 they think I'm a college student. <laughs> my mom, really, I don't think so. <laughs> you look much older than them, and then, uh oh, mom, you are living in Korea, but come to the US, you can never imagine how old they are because so variety over the year. <laughs> anyway, so it was really good memory and then great times. That's because I'm so familiar with this building also, and then, yeah, easy to find this place and then come to theater. And then, I always pace by this theater and wondering about inside, but I've never tried inside, but finally, I made it. Anyway, yeah. Oh, introduction was incredible, and he studied about me a lot, I realized, and then even he explained about why, what is MEMS, what is the mechanical and uh, electrical kind of systems, and then, yeah, that was almost 10 years ago, and then my PhD works, and then I know some of you just studied your college, and then some of you already studied about your major, and then some of you should work uh, thinking about what should I do next year after graduate, and then what sh uh, where should I go, and then what's my next career, and then that is a big, huge headache. Be it, yeah. You are not alone, everybody's. Even a friend of mine, he's uh, 55 years, he's worrying about his next career. Oh, what should I do next? Because I think my career is over here. Oh, and then he told me, oh, envy you, Soyeon, you are younger than me, and you can do whatever you want. I don't think so. <laughs> Everybody called me already doctor, and I already have my own background, and then I don't think I can go wherever I want to go. But in the same time, I talked with my students who I taught before, and then five years ago in Korea, and then they emailed me, Dr. E, I have a big, huge headache. And in a year, I should graduate, but I don't know what to do. Oh my God, and then please help me. And then maybe you have a good idea, and then you can give me an advice, blah, blah, blah. And then my reply always, you are not alone. <laughs> because I'm, I'm also worrying about my next career. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm jobless right now after my MBA. So a student asked me, but really? Yes. So it's not your problem, everybody's problem. Even five-year-old kids who will finish their primary uh, preschool and then they worrying about, oh my God, what happened next year? Should I meet new kids in primary school? And everybody's same. So please don't be afraid and then just face it. And if you face it, and then anything happen. And then sometimes it's good, sometimes bad, but we don't know what happened. But yeah, but best thing is, we should be prepared, whatever happened, no matter what. My case is also the same. And then it's so funny, when I was in elementary school, I dreamed to be a president of Korea. <laughs> so I made a small presentation in front of my class, and then teacher asked me about, what do you want to be when you grow up? And then every single student should talk about what they want to be when you grow up, and then I told. I want to be the first female president of Korea when I grow up. And then, but at the time, it was 1980, and a very conservative culture was around in Korea. So my, but in English, at that, oh yeah, it was middle school, not elementary school. Oh my God, and I confused. And middle school, it was my first class of English. So I should talk about that in English. So I told them I want to be the first female president in Korea when I grow up. And then 
old English teacher come to me and then, so young, if you want to be a wife of president, you should tell first lady rather than first president. And then, I want to be myself president rather than a first lady. And then he was shocked <laughs> because everybody want to be a Miss Korea or models and a nurse, the kind of things is a good for women, but he even never thought about woman can be the president. But nowadays in Korea, we have a woman president already. But at that time, we cannot even imagine that. But thank God, and my parents always told me, you, know, you can do whatever you want, you can be whatever you want to be. So I don't think about any limitation, I don't think about any kind of yeah, sexual yeah, role or part kind of things in any kind of thing. So I told I want to be a president. Of course, nowadays, I don't want to be a president at all. <laughs> oh, it's really boring, tedious, hard job. And then <laughs> they should know everything. And then whenever I, I met more than 10 presidents over any, each country, that's the great part as an astronaut. If you became an astronaut and if you visited some small country and then even president come to the airport and shake hands with me, of course, a small country, not big, huge country. And then I met several presidents. I realized, oh my God, they stuck in their own White House and then Blue House and everybody come to him and everybody asking him some answer. But how can one person have all the answer of the question in the world? But they should answer because they should be responsible for that. And then they cannot go whatever they, wherever they want. And then even if they really want to have a beer with their friends, how can they do in a 30 minute? As an individual, you and me, your friends call you, how about drinking beer tonight? And then, yeah, in 30 minutes, let's meet in a BJ or something, and you can run out. But if you are president, your friends call, let's meet up in a BJ in 10 minutes. Can you go there? Nope. All your security people should be prepared. And whatever dinner, you should make appointment more than three months before. And then every single people should know for the security. And then what if you are single? It's more miserable. You cannot have date and you cannot have private life. Everybody talk. Yeah, I saw the president yet last night and then she met a guy and then secretly, finally I had his photo and upload on the internet. And then every single white House people should have a briefing who they are. So, wow, it's not good. I don't want to be a president at all. <laughs> and then watching the movie, Alice MacBill, and then Great Rock Form was comes up in Korean TV, and oh, I should be a lawyer. And then after watching some other Chinese TV, and then Judge was great, and then he made a great decision. Oh, mom, I want to go to the law school, and why I want to be a judge? And then my mom told me, why not? You can try, but you should study hard to go to the law school. And then after, all my friends told me, and then there's a science high school in Korea, but it's really cool. Everybody want to be a high school scientist. They should go there. Oh, that looks really cool. And then I told my mom, Mom, I want to go to a science high school. And then she said, that's good. Yeah, you can go, but you should study hard. And then one day I watched the TV, and the opera singer is singing with a really beautiful dress. Wow, that's really cool. And then I told my mom, Mom, cancel it. I want to go to the art school because I want to be an opera singer. And then my mom's face a little differently, but she told me, why not? <laughs> <laughs> but you should sing well. And then, mom, I can sing well. And then, but my mom told me, if you became an opera singer, even if your mom sick, even if your dad is passed away, you should sing the very next day because it's your job. Can you sing with a big, huge smile after your daddy passed away? Wow, that's a big deal. <laughs> so, how about having a hobby as a singer? And, oh, that's even better. And then my mom told me, then you can sing whenever you want to sing, but you don't have to sing when you don't want to feel like singing. You know? Oh, that's good. And then my mom told me, a lot of scientists have a hobby as a singer. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had a lot of discussion about my career and roles, but I couldn't make my mind. And anyway, 
several friends of mine went to the science high school, and then I at least want to try tests and then go to the high school. And a lot of my friends want to go to the KAIST because one of the best engineering school in Korea is the KAIST, the Korean Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. And then I've never heard about that school because I don't have an older brother, <coughs> older sister, and then any friends who is older than me, so I don't have any idea about college you are a little ahead before me. I, I always have uh, little brothers and sisters. Oh, that's quite interesting. And then a, a friend of mine come to me and if you want to try KAIST, even you can go to the college a little earlier. And, what? You can pass one year if you have a really good GPA. Then I don't have to have a miserable, boring high school life one year. Take it off. And then he said, yes. You don't have to third year of the high school, and then you can go to the college right away. That's cool. Because oh, living in high school in Korea is miserable because you should go to the school 6 a.m., and then you can come home around uh, midnight. A lot of studying, studying, class, class in an institution, and then, oh, if I can get rid of one year of my high school, I can even sell my spirit to the devil. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, that's good. And then I checked in an application form, I'd love to go to the KAIST before graduation. And then they separated some students who want to go to college earlier. And then we had even more intense class. I didn't know that. But <laughs> intense class. And there, but something happened. All my classmates went to the college and then they passed and then miss one year of the high school. They were successful. But announced one day I realized that I failed. So even if I had uh, intense class, I should have spent one more year in high school, even worse. So I should have not tried a class before if I knew that I failed. So make my life even worse, even if I really want to make better. So sometimes it happened. But nowadays, I really appreciate that at that time because before that time, I was quite confident in students. And then my mom always told me, whatever you want, you can try. So I thought, my mom told me, you can try. But I understand I can make it, whatever I want to do. But it's not. World is not that kind of easy place and failed. All my friends became a college student, has a small mini skirt and then kind of curly hair. Because in Korea, we cannot have a curly hair in high school. We cannot have a small mini skirt in high school. We should have a really boring, dumb school uniform and then black shoes and some certain straight hair black and they're like this long. And if you, yeah break the roll, rules, and then my mom should come to the school and then meet the teacher, and then even worse, after getting back home, and then my mom keep talking about something whole night, and then, so, better not. <laughs> <laughs> but my, stu my classmate went to the college, and then makeup, hair, skirt, and then come back to school to cheer us up, but it's not cheering at all, make us more miserable, oh my god, I failed. They are winner, I'm loser, and oh. And then, but I had a big, huge mind in it. Then, I shouldn't fail again, because I don't wanna make this kind of miserable time more than a year. So if I fail again, I should make one more year to study, because at least I wanna go to the college, at least I wanna go to the university. So, before my failure, my teacher and then my mom required me to get in a library or get in a classroom. I just physically there, even if I didn't study. You know what I mean, right? Just sitting in a classroom and then studying in a classroom is different, right? Sometimes you are studying in your classroom and sometimes you are just sitting in a classroom, right? And then sometimes you are just background of some passionate students. <laughs> sometimes you are major students in your classroom. So I decided myself, I should be a student who is studying in a classroom rather than a sitting in a classroom. So whole my life, even when I made a PhD that is, I didn't study that much. I can point one year 
that time I studied a lot and much more and beyond my ability. And then I cannot study harder than that time. It was the last year of my high school because I don't want to make myself more embarrassing. And then one more thing is I really love my mom. And then I'm so proud of my mom. And because of the conservative Korean culture, my mom couldn't go to middle school, even high school, because at that time, back to 1950 and 1940, and women are not allowed to study, especially in a local suburban area and a very conservative Korean culture. If you if you woman be educated and intelligent, they will not listen to their husband. Maybe, but. Isn't it any problem if a woman list, doesn't listen to their husband? <laughs> it's very common nowadays. <laughs> but at that time, whatever husband do, woman should be very listening and very following. And, and that is a huge, restrictive, a strict Korean culture. So my mom's daddy was crazy strict Korean conservative guy has a really traditional hat, even in a photo. And I, I remember the photo with him. And then even if I cannot remember him very well because he was passed away when I was three years old, but I had a photo, and then he was almost like a history books figure, and then has a very old traditional fashioned hat and then traditional costume until he died, and then he had a huge passion about conservatism of Korean culture. So even my uncle, the brother of my mom, went to the Seoul National University. So he's a, he himself master and PhD, but my sister, even same family, uh, my mom is the same family, only because she's a woman, she cannot go to even middle school. If you are read and write, and if you can speak and then listen to, understand other people's saying, that's enough for a woman. It means you can walk with a washing machine. It means you can read some poster. It means you can watch TV, that's enough as a woman. It's really unfair nowadays, but at that time it was really common. And worse is, my mom's mom, grandma, even cannot read and write at all because at that time, they believe a woman doesn't have to read, be lit, uh, illiteracy because a woman is nothing. But my mom made me more confident woman and she said, woman also should be educated and a woman also should be independent for your own life. And then I really admire about my mom because a lot of my mom's generation, because they live like that and they made their own daughter also like that because they are accustomed to be in that culture. But my mom was open her eyes and then look around and then world is changing and then you should be different. And then even if right now I cannot be a independent, but when you grow up, world will be different. So you should be independent. And that was amazing. But when I failed my college and all my classmates went to the college and then my mom's face is a little different. And then she didn't, she just stopped meeting my friend's mother as a friend because all they are gathering and then having coffee and then chatting about their kids' college life. But my mom didn't know about that because she's never been in college and then I'm also in still high school after failure of my college entrance uh, uh, admission. And then she became a little less social and then became more quieter, silence. Oh my God. Only because I felt and even my mom got some penalty and it feel a little hard. And I should make my mom proud again. I should make my, my mom more confident again. So it's not only for my life, but also my mother's life, I should do better because my mom sacrificed herself for whole whole life for me. And then it's not fair for her. She did her best, but only because my fault and then she cannot be confident. It's not fair. So, okay, I will do my best. And then finally, I got an admission from school, even a year a little later than my, student, uh, my classmate. But I realized that they are quite relaxing because they became already college students and then some of them already GPA is quite low and then they enjoying their college life and then drinking and then hanging around with friends. But I'm quite nervous because one of a loser and then finally get into the school and then I should survive over there. So attitude was totally different with my friends. And then when I graduate my college, I realized that 
even several classmates who come to the college before me, they still in a college and they couldn't graduate because they believe they are smart and able and passionate, but no more. And they feel a little behind. So I realized, you, of course, you should be confident, but you shouldn't be satisfied yourself at all for whole your life. You should push yourself. But don't let other people push yourself. You should push yourself first, and then you don't have to have the mom or teachers who should push you because you already go forward. But if you became lazy to push yourself, always somebody come to you and push you and you feel really uncomfortable. I realized that and then when I come home, I know there's a lot of homework over there, but I don't wanna do it. And laying down on the couch, watching the TV, and then finally my mom yelled, did you do your homework? But if you get in your room and then start your homework first and then nobody told you do your homework because you push yourself first. And then my case is always, I don't want to hear my mom's yelling. <laughs> Who want to hear that? Who want to listen to that? So I always, that's my number one strategy. If I do first, she doesn't have to yell into me. And then, now I became a teacher, I became an aunt, and then hopefully I will be a mother one day, I really wanna have a children. And then, now I have some kids who I can yell. And then my nephew, niece, and then students, sometimes, you know, guys, you are graduate students, you come to the graduate school after your college to study more, but you became so lazy. You really wanna be a graduate student? Yeah, you know, graduate students who wanna study more after the college, they applied by themselves. No parents push their kids to go to the graduate student, at least college or high school, some parents do, but graduate, no. So it means they come by themselves with their own fit, but they became lazy, and then I feel so kind of upset as a professor, and then, guys, you should do your homework, and then yelling, but I realized that it's not good for us even. Sometimes, when I was a kid, I misunderstood. Maybe mom feel good when yelled to me. <laughs> but finally, I became the person who yelled to other people. It's not good. We know it's uncomfortable. So, oh yeah. It's even more uncomfortable to yell at other people because sometimes I feel like, oh my God, I want to do his homework myself rather than yelling to them. But I cannot do that because it's not my life and my studying. So that, that was my learning and then there was part of you and then, oh, you quite long before talking about space, but when I, right, yeah, I didn't mean to, I didn't plan to talk about my life and then mom and then school life and then failure even, but once you face you and then reminding me the time when I became a college student, what can I tell you and then what should I share? And then I really want to sympathize with you. I also have the same feeling with you, but, and then I, real, I remember one time also and then a lot of times and in high school, college, university, middle school, primary school, elementary school, I can go and I talk about space and then my flight and then my life because many of people invite astronauts to talk with their kids. And then small kids, three old, uh, th third year of the elementary school kids raise their hands in the middle of the presentation and then ask me, doctor, I heard you studied a lot. My mom told me, if you want to be an astronaut, you studied hard as you did. And why you did study? You like to study? <laughs> and then I asked that boy back, and then, do you like to study? And he said, no. Do you think I like study? And he said, maybe. Do you think anyone loves to studying? And he said, no. I'm also the same human. I couldn't like studying. And he asked me, then why? 
because I want to make my dreams come true. If you want to be a good pianist, you should practice your piano more than others. If you want to be a great player of LOL, you should play more than other guys. Yeah, some of them understand, yeah. If you want to get a more like and a more pin in your Facebook and in Pinterest, you should post more than others. You should find a, find a better photo than others. You should make a better movie click than others. So to be better than others or to be a good player in any field, you should make more effort. So if you, yeah, I want to be a doctor. Every day you pray. God cannot make you a doctor because nobody want to come to the doctor who didn't study at all. <laughs> you want to be a lawyer. Every day you put the law books in your head and sleeping there. Please, all the contents get back into my brain. <laughs> I needed to try already. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> put the books under my pillow and then, please come in my brain. No way. So, nobody loves to practicing. Nobody loves to study. Even some players said, I love piano, but sometimes they feel bored. Sometimes they feel really, really, really painful to do again and again and again. But why? Because they have a dreams. Because have, they have some place to get, some place to reach. And then you should focus on. And then even if I really want to play LOL tonight, but tomorrow I have an exam, and then I have my dream over there, and then it's the same. I have a debating with my husband every night, and he loves chocolate. He already had a little beer belly, but he played a football until high school, and then he has a six pack 20 years ago, as I heard, but I've never <laughs> believed that. He showed me a photo, but it's very blurred. <laughs> and then he bring his sister and tell her I had a six pack. And then she said, yes, Jason had a six pack. Did you see? And then she said, I heard he was in Florida to study, so I couldn't see that, but he had. And then his mom and daddy both has a diabetes, but he loved chocolate. And then every night, he craving and craving and then please. And then I asked him, you really love chocolate? And he said, yes. You can eat chocolate tonight, whole box. And then you cannot never ever eat again because finally you, have, you will have a diabetes. Or you have a two chocolate. And then tomorrow also two chocolate. And then tomorrow also two chocolate. You can never Every day, two chocolate at night for whole your life. Which is better? Some of them want to have a whole box, and then they believe they can bear without eating any chocolate at all. But thinking about that, which is more? He can live more than 20 years, I believe, because in a modern day, one box is just a 30, 20. So every day two or every day one for whole life is better. But sometimes some people have a really stupid decision. Whole box today, nothing tomorrow. But it's the same as your life. 30 minutes more Facebook and do your own job. Or whole night Facebook and tomorrow you should work some other place and you cannot make your dreams and then you cannot play Facebook at all. So thinking about chocolate, whenever you feel craving and whenever you feel very attractive to something you already knew that is not good for you, that's because you feel attractive. Always, I don't know why, I want to really, really angry about my God. Why? It's not that good things always attractive us. Something good is not good looking. Good food is not that tasty. Good exercising is always hard. But that is fair because 
It's not enjoying. It's hard and painful, but someone who has more patience, more diligence, more passion, they finally made it. You know, what are your dreams in your future? Mm -hmm. um, be a good guitar player. Guitar player, okay. What if everybody, 60 billion millions of the people, can play guitar very well, like eating dinner? Do you think you want to be a guitar player still? Even if everybody can play guitar and everybody play guitar like Eric Krypton and then everybody, even they don't have to learn guitar at all. We assumed from the birth, everybody can play guitar without practicing at all, like eating. You think being a guitar player can be a dream? I don't think so, yeah. So always your dream is not an easy thing. Because, only because it's not easy you, you make this dream. So you can remind it. So when I had a really hard time during the training, and then I told my friends and then called Korea, and then, oh, it's really hard. Should I be an astronaut still? Should I fly to space still? It's really hard. And my friends told me, if everybody can be an astronaut, very easily, you cannot be on the top of cover of your daily newspaper as an astronaut. Who published articles and then 10-year-old students go to the primary school? But they made an article in thinking about that, one student who graduated from the Pierce College and then they became an administrator of the NASA in 20 years. And then your school college newspaper made a huge cover. Our alumni became a NASA administrator yesterday. But they had a dinner last night. Our alumni had a dinner last night. No, I don't think so. Yeah. So if you feel really hard and if you feel really painful, you think it's, it's not easy and you should give up and then think about that. Why this dream can be a, your dream? And mine is also. But there is a, some a word and reward. Going to space is really hard. And then there's a lot of crazy mission. But during my resting time, I can do a meditation like a Chinese master. <laughs> and I took a photo. And I can upload on a Facebook. Everybody said, oh, awesome. But I didn't do take a photo for uploading on a Facebook. I just took a photo because I'm in a space and then want to share how you feel, what the zero gravity is. And I played Taekwondo for 10 years, had a third black belt. I dreamed to be a martial art player like Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee, fighting against the devils flying kicks, but in the, on the earth, it's harder to flying kick like a movie star in a real world, but in space, wow. <laughs> Every, everybody can do a flying kick, yeah. And also, I've never thought about my country or being a representative until I became an astronaut because country is a country just around us. And then if you have Independence Day, if you have some kind of big, huge Olympic Games, and you think about your national flag and your country, oh my, my country should beat others, but not every day. Come on, life. Every day in the morning you wake up, I should work for my country. You don't. Even military guys don't do that. But after you became a really important person in your country, you cannot help it. You should think about your country every day because you became a representative of your own country. So I was so shocked and surprised of myself either. And then, wow, am I representative of my Korea? I, I thought just some other important person and a really high-positioned people can be the representative of my own country. Wow, 
And then you became very responsible and you should very restricted to yourself because everybody watching you. So even if right now you are not the main character or you are not the executive of any com company or you are not important person yet, but you want to be like that. You are not a world famous guitarist yet, but imagine you already. And then you act as a famous guitarist I really admired, or admired, and then you play, and then you practicing like them, and then you can be that place a little more closer and closer and closer. So you, you should brainwash it yourself. You are already the person you dream to be. That is the best way to approach that place faster because some people who became a really great football player or a president or a politician or a government executive officer, but they screw up in a day with one mistake, with one small thing, or some really embarrassing past or experience or something behind. But what if they act all the way from the college or all the way from the high school, they think I will be there those kind of important persons, so I should be so careful not to screw up my life. So please don't reserve your time for the future. You believe you are right now the person you dream to be. And then some friends of mine told me, and then, wow, so young, how could you know you will be an astronaut? And then I told, I've never known. I've never imagined that. But look. You didn't have any kind of scandals with some people. You didn't have any mistake during your school. And then you seems like you plan to be an astronaut because everybody watching your past and then school record and then everybody tried to digging about you to make some kind of noise, but they couldn't find it. But I told her like that, I didn't mean to an astronaut but I believe I can be somebody, so I should be so careful not to screw up in a day. And then so many big guys who screw up their own position because of the one small mistake 10 years ago. But at the time, I didn't know they will be a very important person like that. So you should brainwash yourself and then, I will be this guy, so I should be so careful. And then what if, yeah, for example, you became a chancellor of this school, and you dream to be a chancellor, right? But in your class, you sleep, and then you spill your spits, and then didn't do any homework. But in 20 years, you became a chancellor. But that blue jacket woman became administrative secretary, and she remembered everything you did when you are students. And then she write in a Facebook with a fake account, I was a classmate of the chancellor. I was uh, in the same class. I saw she is doing this and doing this and then doing this. She dated this guy and this guy, this guy. And then she bro broke one chair in a classroom. And then she kicked the door of the theater and then she can tell, at the time I didn't know I will become a chancellor, but it's too late. She already became a chancellor. And then everybody said, oh, we want a better person with a better personality who will be the chancellor, but we don't know. And then one more interesting thing is, not only yourself, but also your classmate, your friends right beside of you. You don't know who will be. A friend of mine in a middle school, she bullied me. I was really bullied because I was geeky nerdy students in school. But it's not a long term, it's just a several weeks. And then finally, I overcome the thanks to my friends, but she emailed me. How can she find my email? But anyway, she found it. Sorry, Soyeon. I should have known you will be a national. I'm so sorry to bully you. 15 years ago. Yeah, at the time if she knows I became an astronaut, she maybe not believe me. <laughs> but you know, 
I even cannot remember her. <laughs> it's more sad part. <laughs> she told me, she confessed me, she bullied me, and I'm sorry, but I cannot remember her. So we are the person who able to make myself to be the person who you dream to be, but in the same time, you are the able person to make your friends to make their dreams also, because humans are very social animal. So people inspire people, and people help people. My case also, I always have uh, some students who trust me and believe me and support me. When I became a final two candidate, there was one other guy, and we compete each other to fly, really, because one guy should be a backup, one guy should be a primary guy who will fly. And then all my friends and then told me, mm, even if you will not fly, we believe you are the first Korean astronaut because you are my person. That makes me really, really encouraged. Wow, all my friends supporting me. And then you already heard, in same year, I should finish my PhD and then I should fly to space. But when I wrap up my PhD thesis, I didn't know if I fly or not because I was a backup member. And then I feel so afraid if I screw up both. I don't know which part I should focus on because PhD, I spent my 10 years to make my PhD happen, all the way from the undergrad. Astronaut, to fly in a space also for two, three years, and I'm the person, everybody watching me through the TV, and then representative of Korea, so I cannot screw up being an astronaut also. But both of them are really big, huge things. Even one thing is hard for one person. So, oh my God, which one I should take and which one I should focus on more? So one day I told my sister, and I'm really afraid I screw up both. What if I cannot make PhD and also cannot make astronaut? And then I have nothing to have after that. Once I focus on my PhD, if I lose my astronaut, maybe I will regret. But once I, my fo I focus on astronaut and I, if, if I miss my PhD, I even regret more because I spent all my life from the science high school until PhD for 20 years. I invest myself to the, being a PhD in this field. But it's really hard. But sometimes everybody has a really important things and a big, huge things in the same time. They are not ready in role. They are not in the line. When in the same day, your daddy and your kids can sit in the same day, which one you should run? You cannot make a choice, right? <coughs> then in the same day, your boyfriend uh, has some problem and your mom calls you, you should come home earlier. What should I do? And then in the same day, you have a big, huge exam. And then one is your really important exam in your school, another one is you to get a job, you should pass this license. It's really hard. And then finally you think, I should do both and I should do my best. And then it's really hard. But one short email helped me to be more patient, passionate and more encouraged because my sister, and through my blog and message me, don't worry, even if you failed to be an astronaut, and also you failed to your PhD, you are still my sister. So you will have your sister. Please don't think you will not have anything, you have nothing after. You have your sister. There was really something, because I, I trust her at all. <laughs> she always criticized me. Whenever I wear the red shirt, and she said, oh, you are not good on red. And if I cut my hair, and, oh, short hair is not yours. Oh, Soyeon, you are living, you are not living in Seoul, so you are very, very unfashionable. Please, reading magazine, and please, watching TV. And if, my sister was like that, but she emailed me in that sentence, and it, it was huge. Wow, even that skeptical sisters supporting me. So somebody around you is really important. But in the same time, you can be that sister to encourage your people also. Because I encourage my sister, she can encourage me also. It's not from nothing. 
and fly me to the world and let me play right after my presentation uh, right after my flight my title presentation title was so uh, one day I sang in space because I literally sang in space it's a space station yeah Beside of me, there are some machines, and then there's a several other astronauts. Cause of the zero gravity, and a laptop is flying around also. And you can't walk with it like that without desk at all. Yeah. Finally, I had a hobby as a singing. <laughs> yeah, I love singing. And a more interesting thing is, that is my favorite song, even before becoming an astronaut, Fly Me to the Moon. And yeah, something is really fun and very attractive to you, but still, after making your dreams, you can still do it. I believe um, my brother is a robotic scientist. He built robots. And his robot sometimes walk, not always. <laughs> sometimes walk like that, like a people. I always ask him how often they can walk. And to make 10 minute walk, they should walk for 10 days. So we always left each other and talking about that robot. But he is a huge fan of computer games. And he always craving to do that. But he was also take his PC game as a chocolate. Every day, just 30 minutes and an hour. Finally, he made a robotic scientist. Still, he can play. He's a professor. Sometimes he play with his students. I feel a little embarrassing, but he feels so proud of that. I beat them. <laughs> yeah, you are so proud of that. 32-year-old professor beat the 18-year-old kids. And he feels so proud. So even you became a 50-year-old, you can still play PC game. You can still watch TV. You can still do something so fun. So please, reserve your time and spare your time for the future. If you do and then play up now, you cannot have and you cannot find any time to play again later because so many life See, serious things comes to you and uh, you never ever eat chocolate at all because of your diabetes, it's the same, yeah. And my case is also still I can enjoy playing and then still I'm one of member of band, small my friends, music band, and then I like that, I can enjoy it because my life became a little more stable. And of course, I cannot miss this part. And then that is the main part, even if I show you really fun photo first, but that was the main. I bring 18 experiments assigned by the Korean government. Fruit flies flying a little awkward because they cannot feel zero uh, gravity at all. And then that is the kimchi. Korean people cannot live out kimchi at all in space. And then that woman, Peggy Wilson, <laughs> she loved kimchi even more than me. And we had a big party with the Korean food, and then there's a several physics experiment. There's a several chemistry experiment, electrical experiment, and a lot of things. And then let's get back to the career back. Some students ask me, yeah, right now I want to be a musician. But what if I don't want to be a musician? What if I want to be a scientist later? And then is it a wasting time? How can I know what I want to do later? And then I can focus all my energy to be that. I want to know, like a weather forecast or a fortune teller, what will I be? And then I can focus on that. But nobody knows. It's a fair. My case is the same. As I told you, my dreams were so changed. But at that time, I also feel really, really scared. What if I want to be different things? And then two years studying in this part is wasting? I don't think so. Whatever you learn, whatever you study, that helps you to be somebody at some point. And then one really ex interesting experience is when I was in graduate school and I was working in a laboratory, 
And then if you became a graduate school in engineering school, you believe in a TV like uh, maybe those people always do experiment, always do working, always do science. No. More than half of your time you should spend in you know, administrative and then something really chore and then cleaning your lab and then mixing your chemicals, preparing chemicals and then checking the storage and then cleaning your lab suit. A lot of chores, more than half of your time spending total non-scientific things always. If you became more senior and then sometimes you should make a presentation file for the whole lab, make a poster, Oh, it's not my research, but you should do that. Because to make one thing happen, there's a lot of things to be supported. And then I feel so upset. I want to be a biomems researcher. I want to develop small micro machine for the future medical solution. But my advisor told me, Soyeon, you should clean clean room. You should make a presentation. You should make this document to admit the patent. You should make a report for the government budget. Oh my god, more than 10 hours I should spend total other things rather than my research. It's crazy. And then after three, four years, I realized I became an expert of the document and report. I can type so fast, and then I can make a patent to files in several hours. At first, it takes uh, several days. And then, oh my god, it's really worthless skills. After I became a scientist, these skills are useless, but why? My professor wants me to do this. So I feel a little skeptical. But I went to the Russia, and then took a training, and then check a medical checkup, because every three months, you should take a medical checkup. If you are not healthy enough, whenever they can cut you, because astronauts should be total healthy. And then they made a huge whole body medical checkup, and then one really uncomfortable medical checkup, I really, really don't want to take it, because it's really painful, and then a lot of chemical you should take, and then, oh, I don't want to do that. And then I have a record from Korea. I already done that test. But Russian doctor come to me, I cannot open your file at all, so you should take this test again. <coughs> no, it's painful. And then I told him, I already took this test in Korea, and they said it's qualified in five years and three years, so you don't have to do this. And then Russian doctor told me, no, 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 we cannot open this file. It's not working with our computer. So without your result, we should take test again. Give me your computer. At the time, I didn't know about Russian at all. I couldn't speak Russian. But computer is all Russians. But same window, same office. Because I worked with the office and window for three years, even if it's a different language, I know every single button is how it works. So from my three-year memorizing button function, <laughs> even if I cannot read Russian at all, I click, 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 and then set up everything, and then open the file. And then photo comes up. And a Russian doctor, wow, you took this test. I told you. <laughs> and a computer guy comes, how can you open? I don't know how, but I opened. And then all they said, you cannot even speak Russian at all. No. You cannot read Russian. No. How? Because I worked with the Microsoft Office for three years as a robot. So when I was working with the Microsoft Office in my lab, even I didn't read English, Korean at all, I automatically did like a robot. So I did as I did. Oh my, oh my god, thank god my professor. He trained me as a Microsoft Office robot, and then finally I didn't have to took this test. Wow. I can admire my professor more than before. Wow, that's because he trained me like that. But it's just one episode. It always happened to you every day. Whatever you learned, whatever you study, even if you think like it's useless right now, but it always helps you in the future. So please, be more passionate to learn something new. 
anything if you don't know, you should be ready to learn. That helps you make your dreams more closer and faster. I'm always feel a little concerned about my background because I studied in mechanical engineer, but before I applied for a designing school, and then I studied about electrical system, and then I moved to the bioscience and brain engineering for my PhD, so my background was so mixed, and I feel a little uncomfortable with that when I apply for a company to get a job before being an astronaut. And then they said, did you study mechanical engineer? And we need a mechanical engineer. Yes, until master's, but I transferred to the bioengineering. And they said, we need pure mechanical engineer. And then some researching institute, they want a biologist, but I'm not a biologist. I just made my PhD in a bioengineering department, and I'm an engineer, not a biologist or a scientist. And then I studied about web design and then graphic design but not for a job, not professionally like um, my computer science friends. So it's really weak for me, and uh, nothing deep. But when I became an astronaut and doing those kind of experiments, government loves me because I study every single field of the science, and then I can understand whole 18 kinds of experiments, because astronauts should touch every single scientific field to take care of the whole experiment. So, even if I think this is my weakest point, whole my life and career, but it became total opposite, strongest point for being an astronaut, even if I didn't mean to be an astronaut. So how you translate is also very important. And then all my friends was quite pretty. It's lucky. But at that time, I don't like it because among them, I always not that pretty woman, because all my friends are more prettier. Oh, I should have more ugly studio, uh, friends, and then I, I look like more prettier. <laughs> but one day I realized that because all my friends are pretty, and then so many college guys have come to me and then try to talk to me, because they feel like I'm a little more easier than other prettier women. And then finally I became a friends with them first. And they finally even couldn't get to my other friends so I realized, oh, that's good, because I'm more friendly looking. <laughs> they always come to me and talk to me. And I finally became a close friends. And I feel a little not that good. All my friends are quite tall in Korea. And then my close friends are all basketball players and then all like I because I'm studying in engineering school. And they always call me short. Oh, you are too short. You are too small. And you cannot do this. And you are a woman. In the mechanical engineering department, there was 100 students, only two girls. And then we always small and then less strong like that. So feel a little com complex about short and small and weak. But I fly with the Russian Soyuz craft, you know, that is quite small. If you go to the Museum of Flight in Tokula, there is a small capsule of the Russian Soyuz. You could see that. When astronauts, three astronauts should pack in a capsule, they should touch each other on the shoulder. And then like this. So packed, really small. Both of my Russian colleagues who fly with me, they are taller than six feet because Russian guy, big, huge Russian guy. They say, Soyeon, I envy you. What? You are very roomy. Yeah. <laughs> Divide three, smaller one has a more roomy in it. Yeah, you, if you can take an aer uh, airplane and then train, if you are small, you have a more comfortable, right? Big, huge guys, uh, but we are quite roomy in it. Well, that's good as an astronaut also, because in a zero gravity, you don't have to have a muscle. Everything's are flying over there. The big, huge box, if you touch, they will fly. So big, muscly guys doesn't have any strong things at all. Yeah. So wow, that's really good as an astronaut. So whatever you feel a little kind of sorry or uh, complex, and then you can always translate in other ways. And then one day, Nowadays, I'm more smiley than before, but when I was in school and until college, I always had a serious 
face because I'm very goal oriented and then go someplace. And once I focus on something, I couldn't listen to even telephone ringing at all. Sometimes my professor yelling to me, Soyeon, answer the phone. But I couldn't hear that because I focused on something, I couldn't hear anything. So always kind of serious face. And then one day my close friends come to me and say, Soyeon, you have really serious face, so nobody want to talk to you. And then they feel afraid to approach you because you have always serious face. And then I went to mom, and said, mom, I have a problem. And then she said, what? I have a really serious face. So friends and then classmates feel a little scared to talk to me. And then my mom told me, that's good. And then, what? And then my mom told me, think about that. If you're a really easy face and everybody come to you and really noisy, but you only have a very selective, qualified people to talk to you, and then whoever who really want to need to talk to you, they come to you. So you have a really comfortable, I think it's good. Oh, that's good. So how you translate is really different, yeah. Among the astronaut society, Asian young woman is really few. And then whole in the world, there was 500 around astronaut nowadays. Some of them are passed away, some of them are retired, some of the former astronauts, some of them are active astronauts, but anyway, total around the 500. If you go to the astronaut gathering, every year we had a huge astronaut gathering all over the world, and then, of course, not all astronauts can come, and then several, and then around the 200, 300, but anyway, if you go, I'm the sometimes only early 30s Asian woman, and then sometimes only 20 women over there, and then I'm one of them. There's only 30, 40, but all uh, white Caucasian women more, and then Asians only two or one. It's very recognized. Everybody knows me. So at first, I feel like, oh my god, I want to be a friend of them. I want to be a member of them. So. If I were a Russian astronaut, it's easy to penetrate and then working with them, hang out with them, but because, only because I'm a small Korean woman and then they feel a little hesitating to talk to me. But in the same time, I'm the only Asian small woman among the whole astronaut. Every single astronaut knows me. Even if my name is really hard to pronounce, so young, but they come to me, hi, so young, because only one. And it's easy to hang out with them because they already knew me. Yeah, I heard, you, heard about you. You are from Korea. Oh my God, it's incredible. How can you become the first astronaut as a woman in your whole country, even in Asian conservative country? So, oh, I thought like being small Asian woman among the astronauts is the very weakest part. But in the same time, it became a really strongest part of that and because they are interested in me, they try to know me, they heard about me, and talk, try to talk with me. And then after this kind of successful mission, I landing down on the ground, I had a huge accident, so we missed the designate place and then we landed on the 300, 500 kilometer away. So mission control couldn't find us, and then they at first reported it to the government, we don't know if they are survivor or not. So we were missed, we were lost actually at first. But for 30, 40 minutes later, finally they got our satellite phone call, and then we reported them a GPS, and then they finally came to us by the helicopter, but it's far, far, far away. So. In general, three helicopters come to us and then check our medical status and then taking us get back to the airport. But at the time, it was really emergency. So only one helicopter can make us because it was too long and they don't have enough fuel. And then we also had a fire inside of the capsule, so we almost killed. And but finally, we survived because fire was gone right before touchdown on the landing. But unfortunately, whole our parachute was burnt out and then. Right after our landing, we were just burnt small rock as a look. And then everybody told me in whole Russian space history, 
we didn't have only one or two times accident, and then nobody was killed. So that is the very proud part of the Russian space history. Even if American history, there was a two shuttle accident and 14 people were killed. But anyway, only two accidents, but I'm one of them. There was a more than 300 Russian astronauts flew and back. They didn't have any accident at all. So some people come to me, oh my God, how unlucky you are. You have only one flight, only 10 days, even if all other astronaut, Russian astronauts flew for six months, but you only have a 10 days flight, but you had an accident. How unlucky. But I told them how lucky I am if I survive because I can get through all problem, all emergency situation. I can practice my all practice and I could show that I'm an able astronaut who can survive from the, that accident. So in same situation, you can translate totally differently. And then finally, I want to wrap up with the, what the title, Mindfulness from Weightlessness. That is the thing I never miss to talk about during my presentation. Even if there is a lot of grateful things around us, we couldn't recognize it. You are sitting on a theater, very cozy chair. It means you are a very selected person. Whole over the world, more than half of people feel starving, doesn't have enough food to survive. But on top of the minimum food to survive, you have a chair, you have a books, you have a school. You can access poster, you can access announcement through the internet, you can come here to heard about astronaut. It means your life condition is above a bridge, all over the world. Because still, more than half of the population couldn't have any internet access, couldn't have any phone call and a landline at all, even if you cannot imagine it. Yeah, whenever you have a smartphone, there is a half bar of the signal, you complain it. Oh my God, signal is so weak. Because it's AT&T, I should go to the Verizon, I should go to T-Mobile. Oh my God, in front of the T-Mobile headquarters, but still signal is weak. We are living in Seattle, but how can it happen? But when I landed on the Kazakhstan, there was a local shepherd who lived like uh, 1800, 1700 like, because they got in the ship, making a tent, living like that without any technology. And then when we faced them right after our landing, we couldn't have any rescue team, we couldn't have any connect with the mission control. We tried to communicate with them to survive. And then ask them, any guys have a cell phone? In Russian, because I believe we can speak Russian. But they don't have vocabulary cell phone at all in their own language because they don't have cell phone for whole their life. They even cannot imagine that. And also, they've never watched a movie for whole their life because they're wandering around the plane with a ship without any technology. How can they watch the Star Wars? How can they watch the 007? They even cannot imagine about cell phone. So still more than millions and billions of people like that. Still more than billions and millions of kids are starving to, killed, to be killed. But we couldn't recognize it and we always accustomed to complaining first. Okay, where were you born? Mm -hmm. China. China? What city? Lanzhou. Lanzhou, okay. Have you ever made an application form to be born in a Lanzhou in China before your birth? My birth? Mm -hmm. It's impossible, right? But you apply for a school to come here, right? It's your choice, right? It's your choice, you come to the Pierce College or some other Tacoma College and some of the Seattle College and then some schools are better, some schools are worse and then it's fair because you apply, right? You already knew that, which school is better, right? But you've never applied for a Lanjo. And then what's your family name? My family mm -hmm. is XU. XU, okay, Su? Su? Shu, okay. Have you ever applied for a Shu family? No. You just were born. 
Until three years old, you even didn't know about your family name, right? But a, child, a Chinese kid who was born in Lanzhou and then living in a Shu family, finally they moved to the U.S. and studied in American college, right? But a small girl who was born in, in the middle of the Chinese continent and then doesn't have any birth certification at all and then couldn't go to the school at all, both of them are not applied, right? Both of them doesn't have any their choice, right? But somebody couldn't have any education at all, couldn't have any computer, any smartphone, even couldn't go to middle school, but you even come to the college. I'm pretty sure you have a smartphone in your pocket, and I'm pretty sure you have a laptop in your home, and then sometimes you complain, oh my god, I should have an iPhone 6, but still 5S, right? But someone think, even cannot imagine how can we talk through the even phone, landline, right? Is it really fair? No. It's not totally unfair. It's really, really unfair. But it happened, right? How grateful your life is, right? Sometimes you all complain about your family and then your parents, oh my God. Some friends of mine, he's from also Langer, but they are work, living in a New York City in the middle of the Manhattan in a penthouse because their parents is really rich. So you can complain about that. Because definitely some Chinese kids are really rich. And then some American children has an American family and then they can communicate with everybody in English, but you are first generation immigrant and their parents cannot speak English at all, so they cannot communicate with their teachers. They feel a little embarrassing. They complaining, but still, some small kid in Africa and in China, they cannot even think about school at all, right? I'm working with the Kenyan kids for several years, and then if I ask, what's your dreams? I dream. Uh -huh. What you really want to have, or what you really want to be, or what you really want to dream to, anything. Maybe have my own company. Yeah, have your own company. Wow, that's great. But if I ask exactly the same age in Kenyan, ask her, what's your dream? And then she told me, my dream is to eat until I feel full. Because she would never eat until they feel full, because always lack of food. And then another kid, What's your dream? And then she said, I want to survive until next year. Because a lot of their friends were killed by the starving and an accident in their life. She already saw that a lot of their friends are killed. So she want to survive until even next year. So if you have a dream, but like you have a company, want to be a doctor, want to be a guitarist, it's really grateful life you have. Because somebody want to have a dream to only survive, not to be killed. Eat until full. Even we are doing diet. Every day you turn on the TV, they had a Weight Watcher, exercising. You always think, I wanna eat until I don't feel full. That's my dream, to be skinny. But some kids, my dream is to eat until I feel full. So how grateful life we have. That's what I thought. That's the time I wonder about. Look through the window from the space. We rotating around the Earth every 90 minutes. Every 90 minutes, you have a sunset and sunrise if you are in a space station. Look through the window, and then I'm really, really looking for my country, Korea and Peninsula. Wow, where's the Korea? Where's the Korea? And a computer told me you are above the America, you are above the Europe, you are above the China, and then, oh my God, finally Korea is coming. It takes a 10 minutes to pass China, it takes a 10 minutes to pass Russia, but computer told me here's a Korea, and then opened the window already Pacific. <laughs> because it's small. Oh my God, small tiny little country I have. I've never thought like that. When I live in Korea, Korea was big. To go to the Seoul, I should drive four hours even. For cross the whole Korean peninsula in 
takes more than 10 hours, but when I came to the California, I realized to cross even California more than 10 hours. Wow, my country is too small. But in the same time, how I can be born in that small country over the whole world is the less than uh, one out of million percent to be born in exact place you were born. But you are not you were not born in uh, Africa, in the middle of China, or in the middle of the ID, in the middle of the Afghanistan. How lucky you are. The place you were born, the family you already have, that is already you got a lottery. Even less probability than having the lottery ticket, right? So that we have that life, we should really appreciate that. We should be really grateful for that. If you are here, taking a class, going to college, even in the U.S., you live more than average life. Some people even think about high school only because of their family background, only because of where they were born, only because of their background. Even if you are struggling to survive in college, sometimes you had a huge headache about your tuition, still, it means you have opportunity to make your own effort. That is something. And then, I feel so regretful, I feel so embarrassing, I complaining about my family background because my family was not that rich, even poor. We are living in a poor bracket and then everybody's trying to help us. So when I became an astronaut, all my neighbors was sure that I'm not dif I'm different Soyeon than they knew already. So literally, a friend of my mom knocked the door and then come to my mom. Have you seen the first Korean astronaut? She looks really similar with your daughter <laughs> because she cannot trust that. That small, little, poor family's girl cannot be an astronaut. But finally made it. And then one journalist come to my parents' house, they tried to make an interview, and then my mom feels so embarrassing because small, rusty house, and then opened the door, they knew all embarrassing environment I grew up, and then my mom told, no, I don't want to have an interview. I don't want to expose my house to the TV. And then my mom called me, Soyeon, several journalists come to our house and they try to make a film in our house, but I don't want to make you feel embarrassing and a small little rusty house and you don't want to show that and you feel embarrassing about your childhood life, this small poor bracket. And then I told her, open the door and then bring all them inside and I feel them. And then some small child who think I cannot be an astronaut, I cannot be a scientist because uh, of my poverty, because of family background, because of our complexity, they can have hope. Even she can make an astronaut, why not me? So even I can make an astronaut, I'm not a special person, I'm just a person who is very ignorant, pushing myself. I always torturing myself. And that ignorant person even made it, why not you? You can do whatever, you can make what, anything. And then one day I believe, I can make a line behind him to get an autograph from the world's best guitarist, who knows? And then I can tell him, can you remember I have a presentation in your Pierce College? Hopefully you can remember me. Can I take a photo? Who knows? She had a company one day. I had an interview. If you hire me, I will do my best. Uh-oh, you are very familiar. Have you? Could you remember that I have a presentation in a Pierce College? I read your biograph, you graduated from the Pierce College. Hopefully you can hire me. Who knows? So look around. You can make your friend's dream happen. You can make your own dream happen. And most of all, whatever happened, you should appreciate your own life and then you should be grateful for your family. You should be grateful whatever, anything around you. Thank you so much. Any question? Any kinds of question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What age did you uh, know you wanted to be an astronaut? Mm, when I watched a sci-fi movie, around five, six years old, 
animation, the Japanese animation even, because at that time, Korean the, couldn't make our own animation. We are so poor. And a lot of small characters go to the space even by the train. <laughs> so, wow, that's cool. What if I became an astronaut? But you know, around the five years old, you don't know any reality situation at all. It's just a dream. So at that time, but as I grew up, I realized Korean people cannot be an astronaut, only Russian or Americans. And then I forget about that. But one day, Korean government announced that we will have at least one astronaut to fly as a scientist. And then I reminded my dream when I was five years old. And then, why not? I can try at least. Because their restriction was, any Korean citizen who is older than 19 years old and in good shape in health can apply, even if we don't know who will be. At the time, I was 28 years old, studying an engineering school for a PhD. And I was quite healthy. So why not? And then I tried, but I believe I couldn't make it because there was a 36,000 candidate. How can I beat 36,000 candidates? So, I don't know when exactly, but I just want to try, yeah. Yep. Uh, several years ago, I could tell you three, because at the time I can speak Russian and English and Korean. But language is a really interesting skill. If you stop speaking, if you stop using, it's go away so fast. So I cannot tell you I can speak Russian. I can understand just a little bit, and then nowadays I'm struggling to catch up again and again, even if I don't have any chance to speak Russian. So yeah, having foreign language is great things, but easy to lose, so you should maintain so badly. I'm really regretting that I'm losing my Russian, so I want to catch up again. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, almost similar from Earth to space and from space to Earth because it's a totally different situation, totally different environment. So if you go to the abroad trip, like across the Pacific, go to China or something, only time difference is really hard, right? During the daytime, you feel sleepy, and during the night, you cannot sleep at all. But from here to there, and then gravity was totally gone, and your blood circulation is totally different because in your biology class, and then science teacher told you, thanks to the heart, you have a circulation because they are pumping. But function of heart for the circulation is less than 50%. Heart's pumping for the blood to go to the brain, not to down. Because of the gravity, blood go down to your hands and legs naturally without any function without any machine in your body, any organ, just go down because you pour the water and just go down like that. But in space, your blood will not go down. Your food will not go down to stomach. Your food will not go down to your bowel. So you have some digestion problem also a little. You always feel full because it's not go down well. And then your face and chest is swallowed because blood is not going down well. So you have a really puffy face the whole day. And also, brain misunderstanding, you have a high blood pressure because pumping and doesn't go down. Your blood pressure in your brain is really high and then brain misunderstood, you have much more water than normal. So brain signal to you, you should go bathroom more, you should sweating more. And then you lose uh, body liquid more than on the Earth. So you should survive 80% of your body liquid in space because brains keep misunderstanding. You have a lot of water, even if your arms and legs have lack of water. And then your arms and legs became thinner. Oh, that's good as a woman. <laughs> and then your boob became bigger because of the blood. Oh, that's also good. And then your hip is a little up because there's no gravity. Oh, that's even better. But your face is puffy, it's not good, yeah. But some old astronaut loves that because puffy face make your waves a little, yeah. 
So anyway, that huge body changing make you feel vomiting a lot. So for three, four days, I vomit every 10 minutes. I always have a plastic bag in, in my pocket because digestion is not that good. Your brain is high blood pressure, so you vomit it and vomit it. So for two, three days, I cannot eat at all. I always drink just to drink juice because it makes me more feel refreshed. But in the same time, after you land it, only takes a three hours. You have only 80% of your liquid, and then going down, you have a gravity. All your brain's blood was go down, and then your brain feel like lack of blood, and you faint out. So you should have a really tight, strong corset on your thigh, not to make your blood go down, but still you fainted. So whenever you watch the YouTube channel, right after landing of an astronaut, they have a really pale face, and then somebody holds them not to fall down. But it's different thing. In US, culture is more like admire your privacy and then take care of your privacy. So US astronaut doesn't have those kind of this scene at all because right after landing, they don't have any interview, they don't have any camera to protect their privacy. So maybe you couldn't see the pale face of the US astronaut who right after landing. They always prepared after several hours to make more stable and then go up to the uh, photo. But in Russia, right after landing to welcome them, all the camera go down and then have an interview. So most of the Russian national, they expose their whole things to public. So you could easily see that they have always two person to support them and a really pale face and sit on the chair. But I, I don't say which is better because as a public who want to know about space, Russian is better because you can understand what's going on. But as an astronaut who want to have a privacy life, and then American one is even better, but I, I, I don't know which is better. And it, but as a fan of the space, I like both of them. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever have dreams about your time in space? Yeah, yeah. But more dreams about after getting back. Because in space, you feel really, really exhausted. And then based on the research, Exactly same walk, same amount of walk, same amount of research, same amount of the experiment, you feel three times more tired in space because you don't have gravity, so you should make your own body stand still and you spend energy. And then everything's flying around in space, so you need more job to finish exactly the same job on the Earth. So three more times to spend, three more energy to spend, three more became stupid in space because there's a lot of things to handle. You feel like you became a little more stupid and dull. So we call this a, a space dullness, a sta space stupidness. And then astronauts themselves feel like we became more stupid because there's a lot of things are different. So we are always exhausted. So how to have a dream during the sleeping? But sometimes, after, right after getting back, I confuse if I'm space or not, right after landing. So I have a dream, I'm still in a space, and I wake up in the bed, oh, nothing floating. I'm not floating, oh, I'm on the Earth. So right after landing, many of the astronauts feel a little confused, especially astronauts who spend six months in space, they confuse a little longer, and then in space, this big laptop, I can throw to my other astronaut. Yeah, here it is. They just get it. But in here, we shouldn't throw a laptop. <laughs> but sometimes some astronaut who has uh, boys and kids and, and daughter, and, and they told, Daddy, throw this ball to us. And then in space, we just throw like that, and it goes away more than several meters. And then here, poop, poop. <laughs> what are you doing, Daddy? I could see it sometimes right after flight, so we feel a little confused. Yeah. Any other question? Mm -hmm. I have a question. What is your opinion on the privatization of space flight, and do you see the possibilities of it going to itself and not just? Uh, Privatization means and then commercial space. Yes. Ah, so tourism. Like, uh, like SpaceX. Perhaps. And then actually outsourcing of the space transportation for the astronaut or something like that, yes. right? I think it's a good moving. I think it's a really good moving because 
I'm not a huge against of the government, but sometimes the government always has a low efficiency, you know? Yeah. Same building, if a company build it, half price, half time. If government build it, double price, and then sometimes three, four times longer than to make it because a lot of a contract, a lot of the undergoing, a lot of the lobbying, a lot of the, con so many complexity under the government job, right? So thinking about efficiency, sometimes companies better, but after the company became bigger, they became a monopoly, it became more expensive and more complicated. But let's remove it and then think about efficiency as an engineer. So I know some of the commercial space developing people, I, I've never met Elon Musk, but some other small company people, and they realize it. If you do yourself, rather than with the government, it's cheaper and then faster and more efficiency. So they try to do it. Because under the government, and then always you have a redundancy process to the documentation or something like that. And also, space is a huge project, always expensive, more than billions and billions of dollars we need. But nowadays, US is not anymore the most richest country in the world, right? So even NASA needed some partner to share the budget and share the money, share the cost. But if government do, there's a lot of security and then government law and then diploma policy, it's hard to collaborate with other countries like China or other country, even with Korea, because a lot of national security stuff. But as a company, they feel more free to work with other foreign company, right? So <coughs> cheaper price, better efficiency, commercial space we really need. But national security and some other space part is really, really sensitive to the security. And that part should still be under the government. So I think spin-off is really unavoidable. And then actually, a long time ago, if the company cannot have a huge capacity they can do by themselves for the space, government should do that. Only government can have that much money. But nowadays, Apple, Facebook, they have even richer than US government. Why not? And Korea also. Samsung is much more richer than Korean government. So if commercial space is more active, and then small countries have more opportunity to work with other countries. And then country like Korea, we couldn't have enough money, enough food resource, because, only because of the population, only because of our geographical size. But once several countries can work together, that's even better. But diplomacy is really complicated. Think about that. Long time ago, during the Cold War, Apollo and Soyuz have a docking on the space. But there was a lot of debating because America and Russia was the enemy of each other to fight each other during the Cold War. But how can they make it only because they have only country to test together? Russian is only have a country who has a spaceship. America is only have a spaceship. But they cannot have enough resources to send two ships to connect. Both as one, and then go up and connect. But by the politician, it doesn't happen at all. It couldn't happen at all. But at that time, scientists, astronaut, they did it as a civilization project without the government. So it happened. But nowadays, it's more complicated without a company only by the government. Even astronaut cannot do that. So I'm a huge fan of commercial space. And also, if commercial space will be successful, you can innovate government body also. Because they realize that if some other people Rather than NASA can do that, government, can NASA survive? No. And then NASA should innovate. And then another government body also realized that what if other sector, other commercial can do that, and we should be changed. So it could be a big, huge influence for the whole other governments, not only America, but also in Korea. We also, I was working in a space agency in Korea. My friends working in a commercial satellite company, to make the same satellite, we need more money, more contract, more document, that big contract. But they do just one phone call and then let's go. So wow. So once in a huge country like US and then Russia has a 
flourishing of the commercial space and then some other countries also change it. And also, airplane was, was owned by the government and the military at the fir very first time. Airplane was only for the military at the very first time, 100 years ago, 150 years ago. But after commercialized for the airline, airline ticket was cheaper and more approachable. And then you can fly with the Southwest even, right? So if it was owned by the government forever, you couldn't fly as a citizen. And maybe you should pay a lot of money. But now it's cheaper, so hopefully, once the commercial space will be successful, we, maybe I cannot, because still it will be expensive, but some more people can try and we can imagine more closely, I think. And then she can do that if she has a company and then she can afford to buy a $22 million ticket, but I cannot. But anyway, in 100, in 100 years or 50 years, we'll be cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, hopefully. So. I have a very fan of the commercial space, but still a lot of problems over there. Once some commercial fly killed people to test for a human space fly, it will be totally different from the shuttle fly because astronaut was killed by the shuttle fly. It's a government mission. They became a national hero. But private pilot who tried the test of the company even if they are killed, they just are killed and are covered by the insurance, that's all. Even if it's a huge step for the human activity. So that is also different. And who is more responsible for the human life? Company is a company, they always going for profit. So nowadays a lot of company treat as a people as just a machine. But Government cannot do that because there is a lot of taxpayer. So there is a, a lot of the cons and pros and we should go through, I think. Yeah. Final? Yeah. OK. Yeah, actually, as you saw, there was 18 experiment. And then 14 is the professional experiment designed by the professional scientists. Some, some experiment I was trained to doing experiment, but I cannot understand contents because it's really high level experiment. But full experience from the science textbook of the military school, primary school, and high school, and to make students understand what the space is, what the geogravity is. And that experiment was really something for me because I feel huge responsibility. And then professional experiment, if it's fail, just a fail, and they just want to know which is different from the earth and to the ground. But experiment for the kids, I should discipline kids. I should talking about space. And then I should introduce about space to the next generation who want to be a scientist or who want to be anything. So that makes me feel so responsible. So, but in the same time, that makes me really feel happy and then honored because so many kids remember my face and then they told me thank you for doing that. Yeah, okay, really last question. <laughs> oh, nice to meet you. Oh, yeah, I really want to go back to space again. And whatever you do, you always have a regret. I should have done this better. I should have done this better. But as the first Korean astronaut, I was so nervous. And then I realized that a lot of Korean people are watching me. So I feel really scared to make a mistake. And then that makes me less natural sometimes. And then that makes me more strict and then more focused rather than enjoying the space. So I feel like I lose some chance to enjoy space more. So if I go to space back and then try to again, I wanna feel, I wanna try to make myself more relaxed and to be more natural and then make myself more natural in the space. And then maybe I, sh I can do my experience better. Because if you are so nervous and if you should do better and then you're very strict and stiff, so your performance is, couldn't be good sometimes, right? But if you feel like home, always, 
if you sing better at your home in shower room rather than orientation, right? And whatever you do, and an exam always, even if you can solve the problem in your home, but once you take an exam, you feel so nervous, so you have no idea in your brain is really white, and then you cannot understand what it says. So if you're really nervous, sometimes your performance is not that good. So once I can fly again, I want to feel more like home, and I want to enjoy space more, and I want to took photo more, make a feeling more to share other people, because in space, it's the first time and I feel so stressful, so I couldn't find uh, enough relaxing feeling to take a photo with a smile. And then all my photo is required to take. Well, most of them, of course, meditation, flying kick is not a required, but I wanna take those kind of photo more to make myself more natural in space. So feel a little sad about that and then wanna look through the window more and I want to talk with the kids through the radio communication more. At the time, I have only 10 days, only have a two session of radio communication with the kids in Korea. It's too short. And then some kids are crying because they made a long line, but my session was over. And then the kids who missed right in front of him, and he cried, oh, it was almost my time. So I feel also bad about that. So hopefully I can have more time to communicate with the kids or public rather than a president or some representative kind of things. It's a, it's a quite official process, but I want to feel more comfortable with the real people who want to talk with the astronaut more. Cool. Thank you.